Okay, right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name's Sean Comber from uh, Environmental Science Department here at Plymouth, and to introduce my partner in crime for this afternoon is uh, Bruce Stockley from the West Country's Rivers Trust. And we do a lot of work together, and so I thought we'd just pick out 10 minutes' worth of uh, an example uh, of uh, one such uh, bit of work we've been doing over the last couple of years in the, the River Tor catchment here in Devon. Uh, and I thought to spend about five minutes letting uh, Bruce fill you in a bit about the background to what we're trying to improve in the, within that catchment, and then I'm going to provide uh, a few slides on the kind of research that we did in order to uh, hopefully feed into the improvements that we're hoping to get in our, our water quality across Southwest Europe in general. <coughs> oh, oh, just push that one. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, so thanks for having me here today. I work for a rivers trust, so we are interested in improving and restoring the rivers and the watercourses as it happens in the West Country, so right here. Um, what you see on the picture over there is an image of the um, River Tor where it exits the coast. Now, yeah, that image says quite a lot of things really. Um, you can see a mixture of different uses. You can see the land use, you can see you know, urban areas, there are wetlands there, um, there's agricultural infrastructure. And really, that, that very point there at the end of the Tor catchment um, in North Devon, um, bar when every drop of rain falls on that area of the West Country, that river catchment, barring that which goes off in evaporation or some other minor, um, minor systems, it will all flow through and end up in that river. So if I want to work on that river and try to improve that river, I need to find out a whole range of different things. And most importantly, I need to find out the pathways through which um, various forms of impacts that I want to reverse occur on that river catchment. So there are various pressures on our river catchments which affect its environmental quality and the quality and those, those impacts have an effect on people. So you know, if you look on the top left hand side, um, you can see that there's a range of things from the sewage treatment works, there's, um, there are point sources, there's transport infrastructure which has a large impact, um, and also there are agricultural pressures on the catchment which are very important you know, throughout the Devon countryside. Um, now, as you can see, there's various examples there where, you know, where our usage has what is often called diffuse agricultural pollution. It's a phrase that we think of, and when you think of diffuse agricultural pollution, you think, oh, it's everywhere. Well, generally it does, barring a few exceptions, start everywhere, but the key point is that that isn't how it gets transported. It gets transported through pathways, and we need to understand those pathways if we're going to take concrete action, which is what I'm interested in, to address those, um, to reverse those problems. So, areas that get impacted, you can see uplands. You get eutrophication over, you know, a direct effect of algal blooms. You get regularly get fish kills, uh, which are very public. And you know, one thing people notice when they see a load of dead fish floating in the river, they realise something's gone wrong. Um, and they also know when their homes get flooded, something has gone wrong. And though it's not quite so noticeable when, when we have to go out and dredge all that sediment that we've actually put into the river in the first place, something's gone wrong. Now, one of the major structural elements that shows the, um, that actually tries to address that is the Water Framework Directive. Now, I, I won't go into any detail, but suffice to say, this is the River Tor catchment, and all the green bits are passing, which there aren't that many. The yellow bits are, are um, what's called moderate, which is a fail, and I probably shouldn't even talk about the orange or the red bits, because they're even worse. Um, and there, there are various elements, you know, phosphate is one of the elements, and you can see that by various mapping and analysis methods, we can try and unpick the different causes of these pollution events and those, those pressures that we put on our catchment for very good reasons. You know, we need food, we need, we need transport, we need places to live. And yet we also need to have an environment which actually gives us all the environmental services that we need as well. Um, a couple of images there of you know, point sources and of course there's a few agricultural pollution I was mentioning before. And we have, you know, we have an aim um, in, for our you know, West Country and the Tor in particular. And essentially um, that aim predominantly falls on those agricultural catchments. So you see on the, on the right hand side of that image as you look at it there, essentially that, with, that you've got a, a fairly sort of modern infrastructure there in farms. If you look on the left hand side you've got a post-war infrastructure and you can see a lot of those pathways that I was talking about earlier. You can see 
maize, maize plantations going down into the river, furrows into the river. There are various forms of pollution and there are various forms of, you know, none of this is illegal, it's just, it's a form of practice that goes on. Um, now also, all of this is nutrients which the farmer wants to keep on their land. They want it on their land, um, but they often don't have the resources to do so. So part of our project is that we go in there, we help enable them to, to create resort, to, um, to change, either change practice, which can save them money, um, but also to try and incentivise change to get those other societal benefits that we want from our rural catchment. So, a few, you know, there's obviously I, I could go on for forever about changes we can make to landscape that improve water quality, quantity, and environmental habitats. Uh, but as you can see, uh, really the key thing that, I'm, that we're talking now about, Sean, is those pathways and where really where do those where do the thing, where do the problems come from, and then how can we address them? Okay, thank you. Okay, right. <coughs> well, <coughs> that's laid out the, the background, uh, and we were part of a kind of science team, I guess, supporting that, uh, those aims. Uh, so there was uh, Will Blake's team within geography, uh, looking at uh, you know, how much uh, phosphorus is in the sediments, uh, something that's not looked at very often. We look at water quality, but we may improve water quality in by reducing inputs from diffuse or point sources. The concern was that phosphorus might then come from contaminated sediment, re back into the water column, and therefore either delay or not show the improvements that we had hoped in the water quality status. Uh, my, my myself, I was involved in, OK, if the phosphorus is there, is it bioavailable? And we had inputs from Northwick, uh, Rothamsted, and ADAS looking at this kind of bit of the, the sort of source tracking as to where, where these chemicals may or may not be coming from. So the idea of the research really was to add credibility to the outcomes and to inform future decision making. So what did uh, Plymouth provide? Well we provided, the good news is we've got all the laboratory equipment you could ever wish for here and we can have all of that at our disposal. Uh, in particular, not only can we measure the total concentrations of a chemical, but we can judge its bioavailability. Is it going to affect the ecology? Because not all of uh, substance is necessarily bioavailable or will interact with the ecology, which is the, what we're trying to improve within these catchments. Uh, we have uh, uh, student input as well via placement and uh, dissertation projects. And of course, we've got sort of uh, high quality academic support here, obviously. So the first thing we did really was to go out and do a, a fairly detailed survey to work out how to measure and determine how much phosphorus is present in fine silts within the catchment. Uh, and then the follow-on question was, you know, how much of that is actually going to possibly a problem? So this is, uh, uh, this is the, the, uh, the tall catchment uh, with a number of different tributaries coming in, typically off the, uh, <coughs> the, the eastern slopes. These red dots represent a sampling point. So we're very busy taking a lot of samples. It's something, a sort of density that's not possible, say, from the regulators, such as the Environment Agency, because of costs and, uh, and resources they have available. So fine silt was collected and measured for these sites. And just to illustrate, uh, this is one catchment, the river, the, the, the Dolch, which feeds in down to uh, the, the, the tour at uh, Latford. And these are concentrations. We are finding concentrations up to, well, several thousand milligram per kilogram set against a background that you'd expect of about 500. So it's potentially, you know, almost 10 times the concentration of a, a pristine catchment. So the question was, there's a lot of phosphorus in there. It's come from agriculture, it's come from sewage works, it's come from a bit of industry. The question then really was, well, is that bioavailable? So we used a, a, a very sort of cutting edge piece of technology developed by Lancaster University, diffusive gradients in thin films that can capture only the bioavailable phosphorus. And they, uh, you put these gels in, a, in, in this, uh, sorry, this, this uh, plastic frame and you push that into the sediment, leave it a couple of days, take it out, and then you can cut up le uh, layers from that film and measure the bioavailable phosphorus. So you, we went down to about a depth of 12 centimetres and what we could see is there is actually quite a lot of bioavailable phosphorus present in some contaminated sites, typically downstream of a sewage works or industry, and also where there's a heavily uh, agriculture impacted area where a lot of cows have been tromping around in the, in the, in the sediment, adding, uh, adding uh, sort of uh, phosphorus. The good news though was that although there is a high concentration there, it's not coming out into the overlying water here. And that's what we found, it was, it was linked to linked to two specific uh, reasons for that. 
Um, one was, uh, well, well I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll come to that in two seconds. So basically, in terms of conclusions, generally speaking, much higher than background concentrations. We found elevated levels uh, downstream of either known agricultural point source inputs, uh, but we found that iron was controlling the total concentrations within the sediment and locking it up, making reducing the amount that was coming into the overlying water column. And generally speaking, calcium was contributing to reducing the amount of bioavailable um, phosphorus present. So we conclude overall that although there's a lot of phosphorus in the sediment, uh, it was effectively stable. It wasn't coming out, it was leaching at any particularly high rate, and is unlikely to even when we improve and reduce some of these point source and diffuse source inputs. However, it's potentially bioavailable, so maybe climate change, you know, increasing storm events could wash things into the overlying water column, and that would therefore introduce this phosphorus into the, into the overlying water, which would cause issues associated with meeting our new standards. So overall, really, then working together, the benefits that we've had out of this project are scientific papers we got out of it, um, credible research that's helped then feed into the decision-making process, ongoing collaboration, uh, student placements, uh, opportunities for joint PhD funding, and really the, the ethos of the Water Framework Directive and catchment partnerships is a collegiate approach to environmental management. Thank you. Thank you.